Hello everyone, my name is Linda Shi. I'm VP Data Platform from Ticketmaster. I'm very happy here to share a project we finished recently, which is performance evaluated between three different Cassandra distribution, SellerDB, DataStack DSC, and Apache Cassandra. Here's our quick agenda. We go through who we are and our challenges. Then I will share the testing result. So Ticketmaster, you may heard about us. We are the ticketing division uh, of Live Nation. Live Nation, which is one of the biggest entertainment company in the world, we bring amazing live event experience to people, and we are very proud of doing that. Behind the scene, our technology landscape is huge. We have 27 ticketing systems, and we have over 250 unique products. Talk about database, we have thousands of database with HyperCal deployment across RDBMS and NoSQL. Here's a couple of examples. We're using Oracle, we have MySQL, we have AWS Aurora, we're using DynamoDB, Elasticsearch, um, we have Cassandra, we're using Microsoft SQL Server, we have a Postgres, we have Teradata. With a lot of like a huge uh, technology landscape, it usually comes with huge operation challenges. Among those challenges, our number one challenges is always associated to our very unique business pattern. So this is the diagram, it's a network diagram we captured during our cell. You can see, you know, because of the inventory limitation and also high demand, when we open for on sale, our traffic can grow from the ground to the roof within one minute. And those stress push down from the front end all the way down to back end. Usually with the inventory sorted out, 15 to 20 minutes after on sale, the traffic will go back to normal. So we know our on-sale schedule. We have a predictable on-sale traffic. Can we be more prepared? So that's a question we ask ourselves every day, particularly when we introduce a new technology, including Cassandra. So here's the question we ask ourselves when we introduce a new database technology. Does this technology will give us more predictable infrastructure build requirement with the traffic growth? Does this technology give us elastic ability not only for scale up, but be able to scale down within a meaningful time frame? When I talk about time frame, I'm not talking about days, not hours, I'm talking about minutes. Can we provide unified deployment to set to both cloud and on-prem with a shippable technology. How do we balance between features and cost? And the last one is always the most important one is performance, performance, and performance. Um, talk about Cassandra. Our earlier adopt of Cassandra happened many years ago, but our first enterprise deployment happened in 2019. We're using DataStack DSE. With those success, the question is, does Cassandra potential could be our standard key value DB solution? Should we provide the same solution or different solution for different workload and business tiers? How do we find a balance between cost and performance? And how do we provide a very easy evaluation tool set and deployment tool set for our engineering team? With those questions, we um, invested uh, three months to for a small project uh, for a Cassandra evaluation for three different distribution. And also, uh, as a result, we build, uh, we come out uh, easy uh, evaluation to set and deployment to set. So let's talk about our testing case. 
after different trials, multiple trials, here's the final uh, testing design. Uh, we decided to use one database cluster, single region with one DC, six nodes across three AZs. We decided to use EC2 with EBS. I will talk about why we're not using MEMS in next slide. We have testing nodes separate from DB node. Uh, we pick up like two patterns, single node, six node, and those nodes has to be built on the same region with the database cluster where existed. Uh, for each run, we have a data warm-up. Uh, we pre-build 50 million data before each testing. We're using Cassandra stress for testing with Tikimast customized YAML. Um, we notice each distribution have their own Cassandra stress binary. If you cross using them, the data will be very interesting. So we decided to use the match one. So for example, when we evaluate SellerDB, we're using Cassandra stress binary from SellerDB distribution. We do five different workload testing, 100% read, 100% write, 50-50 read and write, 80-20 read and write, 20-80 read and write. Each test lasts 20 minutes. Now let's talk about MVMEs. So um, all the current available Cassandra technology or recommendation does shows MVMEs will provide much better performance for Cassandra. Now we do notice that and we honor that result. Um, but go back to our business requirement. If we're using MVME, it is very hard to control the elasticity. So the question to us is really find it out where is our balance. So we started to think about EBS. So in 2019, we put about more than one month um, a lot of effort for testing, and here's what we here is what we found it out. Now there's three major metrics to talk about performance impact: um, memory size, CPU speed, or number of the CPU, and storage. Our testing shows if your product is writing heavily, then the number of the CPU and the speed of CPU is more matter. Now, if your product is hot data read, then your the size memory, size of the memory is more matter. If you do not have a regular pattern, you have a random business pattern, a random read, random write, then you should use MVMEs, which is, can give you the most um, best performance. Looking for scalability. We know if we choose EPS, it will, no matter how big the size, it will take about one to 10 minutes for scale up and down. And that's the same thing for doing single node or entire DC recovery. Now, if you're using MEMEs, then the scale up and down, the timing is related to how big is your data set. The bigger the data set is, the longer it will take. We tested on a very typical 6 TB size of data. It will take about 10 hours or even longer. So look for our business. Ticket master, most of our product is write performance requirement or the write and read immediately. So it's a hot read requirement. So we believe EBS can meet those requirements. So that's the reason we're choosing EBS for started. My, my recommendation to you is you are the person knowing, knowing your business. You should run your testing and find it out solution what fit for you. And we noticed that MVME will give us a better performance and we keep eyes on that. If any of our product will run to the bottleneck of performance, we're going to be switched to MVME. But at the beginning, we decided to pick EBS. So this is our customer YAML. I'm not go through each detail. It's very straightforward and information will available for you. 
So key space setup, table setup, um, this is the column setup, and we define very straightforward write and read. One of the things I like to share is this is high level how we uh, this after this part how we build out uh, our uh, repeatable testing um, tool set, and also it's a deployment tool set. So everything is stored in GitLab. We have pre-built machine image for contain the binary, um, and we have we're using Hashcub um, Terraform for AWS resource management. Now database setup, or we call it database bootstrap, is starting at three, and we pull it when all the you know the installation is done. All those setup go through uh, CI/CD. So it's a pipeline, you can click the button and uh, it took about 15 to 20 minutes and your testing environment will be ready for you. As our deployment standard, we're using Prometheus for monitoring alert. We're using Grafana for dashboard. All the DB logs go to uh, Umprint um, Elasticsearch cluster for central logging. And for testing case, we're using ASG uh, to control how many concurrency you need it. Uh, it's one parameter you can control. You want a six, you want a 10. Um, the customer YAML file is a parameter. So after finish those testing, our entire tool set is ready for our engineering team to leverage it and using it. So it's the same setting for data stack and Apache Cassandra. Now our testing result. Uh, first of all, let me explain a little bit those diagram. This is not the data from one run. We have multiple testing run in different time. We pick up uh, the median three set of it and do average it, and here's the result. This is the single node with Henry thread. Um, you can see there's a little bit difference about the performance. Um, but those are really a benchmark because when we're testing it, we notice that behind the scene, the DB cluster is not that busy. It just to give a baseline about single node testing result. Now, I will see three distribution all perform pretty well. The next one is very interesting one. This is the six node 100 thread concurrency. We do a different combination. We finally pick up six nodes, six nodes. That's because we found it out when we have a six node 100 thread concurrency, we can drive the database very busy and the CPU uh, is almost reach 100% at the back end. So we decided, we decided the data is meaningful for us. Now talk about three different distribution. Uh, data stack DSC, I would say it very stable. Uh, for multiple round of run, they're very stable on their uh, performance. SellerDB, uh, also very stable, and they show a little bit um, better performance on the setting we pick up. Now, Apache Cassandra, uh, under the high load, uh, it shows the performance is not as good as the other two. And also, we notice there's a random error um, during the testing. So I will say Apache, Apache Cassandra and the high traffic load may not stable as what we expected. Now our conclusion, we think SellerDB is a very great database platform to handle high traffic demand and we will consider it in our offer. Before I finish this um, demo, I will have a big thanks to my team Without them, I, I don't have anything to share here. So a special thanks to Adam Wong, Erica Ip, Leon Kais, George Sajan, Sari Rangesti, Aron Kumar. And this is my contact information. If you feel this is interesting, you want to know more, you feel free to reach out to me. If you have um, experience, uh, interesting experience want to share. I'm very happy to hear about that. And um, thank you very much.